We are in church. Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to the 11 o'clock worship service at Missouri United Methodist Church. My name is Daniel Hilty. And uh, I have been accused often in my life of being a, a master of the obvious. And so uh, to once again be the master of the obvious, I think we're in for a pretty special service this morning. Yeah, I yeah, think so. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it is such a joy, such a joy to be able to, uh, to, to welcome uh, Washington Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church to the 11 o'clock worship service. You're going to have a more formal uh, welcome and greeting in just a moment, but for now, I just want to say how excited I am, how grateful I am for that. We're also so excited and grateful if you are a guest today. If you are a guest with us today, you've picked a really good day to be a guest at Missouri United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you are here, and we hope you have a sense that no matter who you are, you are loved and welcome, and uh, Jesus loves you, Christ loves you, God loves you, we love you. You're always welcome at Missouri United Methodist. I hope you'll take a chance sometime over the course of the service to fill out the Connect card. That is on the back of the pew in front of you. It just lets us know a little bit about yourself, and then you can place it in the baskets, the offering baskets later on. 
Also, please stop by the Connect desk and the connector as you're leaving to find out more about what is uh, going on here at Missouri United Methodist. Speaking of that, Pastor Jewel has some announcements for us. I have very exciting announcements, and also I have a little training to do because we have welcomed a black preacher here with us, and that means we need to practice some call and response, okay? <laughs> so I need you to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes. Preach it, Pastor. Okay, so I want you to thank you. That was good. Just in case you might feel a little silly doing this, we're going to practice it in the most silly way possible, and that is with the announcements. Okay? Like so as I give you announcements, I want some call and response here. And if you don't get enough, I'm just going to keep talking. Preach. Okay? Right? Preach it. Yeah, yeah. Preach it. Preach it. All right. My friends. Promotion Sunday is coming. Children are going to be raised into their next phase of life. Children are going to graduate. Students into the workforce. Yes, God is moving and working in our children. And we are grateful for them. Yes, we are grateful for the children. We want to celebrate them. We want to celebrate them. And if you happen to have a child, could you please fill out the QR code with the form so that we can know and we can celebrate them? That was good. Preach I think it. they're doing pretty Preach good. I, I yeah. feel the spirit. Yeah, all right. Good. Okay. We're going to go again. God is here in this place. Amen. We are together. I am grateful for you. I am grateful for you. I am grateful for all of you. And I want you to feel deeply connected to this place. I hope that God is moving and working in your life. That you are feeling closer to God. That his spirit is filling you. That you are ready to take that next step. Amen. Take that next step. How can we do it? Move further into God's grace, into this community, my friends. How can we do it? You can come to the next steps lunch. You can have a great lunch with us, these two fabulous pastors here. But we do need to know that you're coming. Please RSVP so that we have enough food. Okay? Amen. All right. Okay. Amen. This is the last one. Y'all are doing great. You're, I'm so proud of you. Okay. God is the God of the world. God is the God of the whole world. Not just here in this place. Not just here in this city, but in the whole world. Amen. And we are going to recognize and remember that as we move to our United Methodist General Conference. Amen. Amen. And we need the prayer of the Holy Spirit. We need God's Spirit to fill the General Conference. Amen. Amen. And we need all of you to be praying. Praying for our pastors and our leaders, those here in Colombia and in America, across the whole United States and in the world. Can I get an Amen. We need God's presence in this place. We need God's presence in the United Methodist Church. We need God to fill us and move us and make us. And we want to know more about what God is doing in the world. If you would like to know more about the General Conference, we are gathering together as leaders. We are gathering together to learn more about the church at Engage Nights, April 18th, 6 to 8 p.m. 6 to 8 p.m. Please come. If you want to know more about the General Conference... If you want to be in community, it's great. It's new. So please come and check it out. Amen. All right. Amen. I think that's what I got. All right. Thank you so Praise much. Praise God. Jewel. I invite us to stand as we're able for our opening call to worship. I'm Brother John Davis. As Jesus approached... A voice cried out. Others tried to silence the voice, but it cried out all the more. When Jesus heard the voice, he stopped and he asked, what do you want me to do for you? And the voice replied, as we remain standing, but before our opening hymn, I was so wrapped up in the spirit, I failed to pause for our official welcome of our guest today. And so uh, Clark Mershon is the lead of, is the chair of our lead team, our church council. He is here to uh, officially welcome uh, our, our guest today from Washington Metropolitan.
Thank you, Pastor Daniel and Pastor Jewel. Good morning, everyone. Today, our hearts overflow with gratitude as we extend a special welcome to the Reverend Dr. Anthony Witherspoon and the beloved congregants of the historic Washington Metropolitan AME Zion Church in St. Louis. It's an honor to have you journey two hours west to worship with us this morning. Last week, as some of us experienced the blessings of your fellowship, we were deeply moved by the warmth and love you shared. Today, we eagerly anticipate reciprocating that same Christian love within the sacred walls of Mumsey. The bond between our churches is one of profound camaraderie, and we're grateful for the esteemed relationship between Pastor Daniel and you, Dr. Witherspoon, for the past 30 plus years. Both Washington Metropolitan and Missouri UMC stand as beacons of faith, each carrying a rich legacy of service and devotion. As we gather in unity this morning, let us open our hearts to the divine presence among us, knowing that together we embody the timeless spirit of Christian fellowship and love. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters from Washington Metropolitan to this sacred space. May our time together be blessed with reverence, inspiration, and the boundless grace of our Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. That? for the greeting from Clark Rashad, and we are grateful for Cynthia Davis uh, for her reception of our welcome and representing Washington Metropolitan AME Zion Church. Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you this morning? We were so blessed 
and so, so very blessed to have uh, you guys with us last week. It was just, the time was just too short. It went way too fast. I thank you for that beautiful, beautiful welcome. We are honored to be here with you to praise God and to lift his name and to give him glory. Thank you so much for all of your hospitality since we walked through the door. I think I've probably got 20 names. I don't remember none of them, but it's okay. You guys wear name badges, so it's all right. But thank you for that wonderful welcome. We are honored to be here. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ray Jr. I Morning, him together, please. Oh God, vision of we come take you, you like your past. You are here as my hearts. And the position of our God is the shot, and you are hunting there. And your ancestors, and your ancestors, and help us respond to our questions with our hearts and submissions and our eyes. Open our eyes and ears and minds and the what we desire and what's more. In peace. Move as my mother's says to you. And for our prayer of prayer. And we pray God say, Amen.
I'm so grateful for these moments together this morning. I have the honor of getting to introduce our guest preacher today. Immediately after this introduction, we will be hearing our scripture lesson, and then you will be hearing uh, from him. Our guest preacher today is Reverend Dr. Anthony Witherspoon. He has been the senior pastor at Washington Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in St. Louis for 24 years. 24 years. Before then, Anthony has uh, served churches in North Carolina and Virginia and Maine. He has been appointed by governors and bishops to multiple state boards and church boards and agencies. He is an educator, a college professor, a mentor to those who are experiencing a call to ministry. He also himself recently experienced a call to ministry in a new form, in the form of bishop uh, of, uh, at the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Uh, for that denomination. He is currently in the long and arduous process of running for bishop uh, in the AME Zion Church. It is July, right? July is when those elections will take place, and I invite us, please, to pray for Anthony and for that election. Anthony is also an outstanding preacher, as you are about to experience. And uh, it, just to... Uh, to, to do a gentle reminder of what Pastor Jewell said as well. I had the joy of preaching at Washington Metropolitan last week. It was amazing. I can tell you personally, as a preacher, there is no more affirming experience than to get some amens during your sermon. Um, it is amazing. It is amazing. And so I know that would be a sign, not only of response to the Spirit this morning, but of uh, signs of appreciation and support for Reverend Witherspoon during his sermon as well. Reverend Witherspoon and his late wife, Sherry Renee Farr, are the proud parents of two wonderful daughters, Brittany and Anquinette. Uh, Anthony is the proud grandfather of two, two grandsons, right? Two grandsons. And finally, on a personal note, I want to let you know that uh, Anthony is one of my longest and dearest friends. Um, I was thinking before coming up here, I can't think of anybody except for Kristen who has been a, a part of my life outside of my parents on a continuous basis any more than, than Anthony. Uh, I said at Washington Metropolitan last week, we have known each other and been friends for over twice our current age uh, with uh, less than 
or more, I'm sorry, less, more than twice, ah, we've been friends a long time. <laughs> Can I get an amen on that? Amen. For over half our lives. Is, some of you know that I'm an only child, and um, even though I'm an only child, I've been, I've been blessed over the course of my life to have a, a few dear saints in my life that I, I count as brothers and sisters and siblings, and Anthony is one of them. He's, uh, he's about as close to a brother as I have in my life, and I'm grateful for him today. He's also one of the people that I admire most as a Christian leader and as a follower of Jesus Christ. He constantly shows grace and makes you feel special no matter who you are. Um, I first experienced that um, 23 years ago when Anthony was in this pulpit right here and I was being ordained. I was being ordained here. And in the ordination service in the United Methodist Church, they invite a, a representative of another denomination to bring ecumenical greetings. And when Anthony said yes to that invitation, he didn't know I would be here, and I didn't know he was going to be the one bringing the greeting. And ever since then, it's just been one grace after another after another, knowing Anthony. He was there when my father died. He was there when illness came to our family. One of my most special memories of Anthony was at almost 10 years ago now, after the, um, the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Anthony's host, the church in St. Louis hosted the NAACP uh, Journey for Justice march from Ferguson to Jefferson City. They walked 120 miles, 120 miles. Anthony walked 120 miles from Ferguson to Jefferson City. We were living in Jefferson City at the time. And getting to welcome him and uh, give him a big hug when he came walking into Jefferson City was one of the holiest moments of my life. So Anthony, I love you, we love you, and we welcome you to Missouri United Methodist Church. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. James Owens, and I will be reading the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 35 through 42. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Holy Spirit, as we have read this scripture in our community, humbly interpreting through reason, varied experience, and tradition, bless our hearing and understanding. May our listening be done with love. I guess this is when I say, wow. Can you say wow? wow? This is a wow moment. Highest praises to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> to your very fine and illustrious pastor, dynamic pastor, uh, my brother, my friend. Uh, I, I say my brother from another mother, <clears throat> the Reverend Daniel Kilty. I come back to him, to his beautiful bride, Kristen, and Elijah, stand up. Man, I didn't recognize you playing that. I asked, I asked your dad, I said, who is that playing that guitar at the 930 service? He said, that's Elijah. Elijah has grown all the way up. 
and to Maggie and to uh, all of you, to all the ministers who are here today. Uh, we're excited about what's getting ready to happen for Pastor Jewel uh, coming up in Kansas City. Amen. To all the ministers who have come from Washington Metropolitan, uh, there are about 20 preachers at Washington Metropolitan, and so some stay back at the church in St. Louis, uh, and uh, we're grateful to, the, to God for that. To all of you, the officers and members of this church, uh, any visitors who are here, uh, I have been to this church on, a numerous, uh, on numerous occasions, and when I walk on the grounds, you're always very hospitable. I, I oftentimes times come by in casual clothes. And so you greet me as though you knew I was a preacher. And so I'm grateful to God for that. To this very dynamic uh, part of a choir, Voices of Zion, uh, who, who always allow the Holy Spirit to use them in a magnanimous way. And uh, uh, the youngest of the group, the youngest of the group, the youngest of the group is Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Johnny Gross, uh, 80 years of age plus, amen. amen. Uh, stand up, Brother Gross, <laughs> amen. Um, he's, um, uh, uh, he's, a, he's, a, uh, he, he's an Air Force veteran. Uh, I was in the Navy, so I, I forgive him for being an Air Force veteran. Uh, but he just got back from uh, that flight that honors veterans. And, uh, and he just got back, and we're happy. Uh, him, they, uh, to our very dynamic musicians, they... They, they can break loose now. They can, I said they can break loose. That band you have can break loose with them. And you will have a magnanimous time uh, together. And to uh, our trustees and stewards who are here today, uh, Richie uh, and, the, and the tech team, and Fred, uh, uh, we're happy to have you. Now, Daniel, let me just say this and get out of the way. Daniel, I'm going to tell you the truth about Daniel. Y'all don't know the truth. Daniel is all that and a bag of chips. The young folk know that story. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's quiet and unassuming, but he's powerful and can preach. When I announced to Washington Metropolitan that Daniel was coming, they were, amen, amen, amen. And they were saying amen. I said, they don't say amen to me like that. You know, uh, say amen. amen. Because we love the Hilties. We are very close, and I thank God for your pastor. He loves you. Uh, he talks about you quite a bit, and uh, I, uh, uh, I was here when he was ordained uh, that night, and uh, I had not seen Daniel uh, since seminary. And to know that he was in the state of Missouri and from Missouri, and brought Kristen from North Carolina. She is from the, the greatest state in the whole wide world. Okay, I know you won't agree with that. That's okay. All right. Amen. And so we're grateful for the opportunity to be here with you uh, on, on today. I want you to know you have a tremendous first family. God has blessed you in a magnanimous way to continue the legacy of other ministers you have had at this church. Now we're praying for Pastor Jewel because God is getting ready to do for her what God is doing for you. We know God is going to touch her and allow her to be successful in that right. Amen. Amen. Come and thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness on us descend. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The Gospel of Luke chapter 18. You'll find these verses. Verses 40 through 42. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him when he came near Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said unto him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. I want to preach this morning briefly from the subject, to meaning from meaningless. To meaning from meaning less. It's easy to assume that just because a person's quiet, they don't have anything to say. It's easy to assume that because a person's easy going, that they're pushovers. You find out really how people are when you back them into a corner. Or when you say the wrong thing on that right day. 
or when they, they step into the church in your pew and step on your toes, you'll find out how people really are. You also find out how people are when things happen in their lives that are beyond their control. When things happen that one moment they were on cloud nine and the next moment they find themselves in the valley of the shadows of death. You find out the real essence of a person when they're going through hell and high water, when they're sick, when the doctor has diagnosed them with something, or when they're handicapped, or when they're secluded and away from everybody. When you get to know people, you find out what it takes to push their buttons, and they come out like cats. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that moment when Jesus was entering Jerusalem for the, first, for the last time, he, he goes through Jericho, and uh, he knew that week on his way to the resurrection story, he had a lot on his mind. Amen. How many of you have ever come to church with a lot on your mind? How many of you have a lot on your mind right now? He came in with a lot on his mind. Listen, uh, he had to deal with a few of his disciples who thought because they were close to him and distant cousins that they would get car block privileges. He told them, you don't know what you're asking for when you ask to sit on my right and on my left. Then he had to deal with the issue of greatness. His, his, his disciples thought, because they were the, the original 12 disciples, that they should have special privileges, that they were more important than the least of them. Jesus said, no. Unless you humble yourself as a child, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And then he had to put his own personal uh, uh, emotions aside uh, as he had to deal with the disappointment of Judas. I don't think you have any Judases in this city, but in St. Louis, there are a lot of Judases. He had to deal with it as he sat at dinner with a betrayer, and while he is dipping his hand into the cup, into the dish, he says, one of you will betray me. If I thought it wouldn't get you in trouble, I would tell you to turn to your neighbor and say, are you a betrayer? <laughs> and then he had to deal with himself. Amen. He knew he had to die. He asked the cup to be removed from him. If it be your will, Father, forgive Please, for, please not only forgive me for what I'm going to say, but, but move the cup from me. And then when he found out the disciples were asleep, he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And then he had to deal with trying to place somebody in charge of his mother. I don't know if you've ever had to deal with your mama. You can't put mama and just anybody's hands. If your mama's like my mama, uh, you better ask permission. Jesus does not ask permission. He says, mother, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. <clears throat> and then, after he's done all of that, amen, are y'all awake this morning? He goes into Jer to Jericho, and there is a man who asks, what's going on? A blind man by the name of Bartimaeus, what's going on? I can't see what's happening, but I can feel it. My senses are, are kicking in. I feel a tingling sensation, and I hear with my ears something's going on. And the people say to him, Jesus of Nazareth is coming through. And then, out of nowhere, he says, Jesus, son of David, help me. Jesus, son of David, help me. As if the Lord didn't hear him the first time. Jesus, son of David, help me. The people told him, shut up. And I like his response. I'm, it's not in the Bible. I, this is a, you know, I'm not talking to you anyway. I'm talking to Jesus. And the more they told him to be quiet, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. 
mercy on me. You see, when you need Jesus, you don't care what you have to do to get to the master. You don't care who you have to go through to get to Jesus. And when you really want Jesus, you don't care what people think about you getting to Jesus. And when people try to hold you back from getting to Jesus, the more they hold you back, the more you begin to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus says, what do you want? And I like what Jesus does. He does not call his name. And when he says, what do you want, he does not specify who the you is, but when the you needs Jesus, the you knows. Can I get a witness this morning? You, you see, when you, when you need Jesus, uh, you know when he's speaking to you specifically, when he says, what do you, you, you want? Ask your neighbor, what do you want this morning? I want to see, I want to see, I want to see. You know, I grew up at a church, um, um, uh, at first, uh, before the Holy Spirit began to really take place, they would say, you're supposed to be quiet all the time. You're not supposed to make any noises. Because the, qu the more quiet you are, the more you reverence God. But then I would watch the way they treated people. And I said, if that's representing God, I don't want any of that quiet. And whether you are noisy, whether you are quiet, whether you're moderate, whether you're excited all the time, it does not matter. What matters is that you really know what you want from Jesus. Jesus can supply the needs of every type of person from every type of background, regardless of your favorite uh, uh, news station, regardless of your favorite color or your favorite pizza, he knows how to get our attention. So just a few things and I'll get out of your way this morning. Are y'all awake this morning? Yeah. Jesus, son of Nazareth. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Well, uh, sometimes, listen, being blind does not mean that you cannot see. The problem I have is those who can see who still don't see. The crowd of people who are around Jesus, when they are asked what's going on, they respond, Jesus of Nazareth is coming through. I want you to note the difference between what they say and what Bartimaeus says. They know him as Jesus of Nazareth, meaning they know him from where he was raised. And you remember they asked the question, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? But no, Bartimaeus, even though he was physically blind, he had enough spirituality to know it's not Jesus of Nazareth I'm talking to. It's Jesus, son of David, his divinity, his, his fact that he is the Messiah of the world. Amen. You got to look beyond where people come from and not judge them based on how they grew up, but judge them based on where they're going. You see, you have to look beyond their faults and see their needs if it was true. Based on where we're from, we would never amount to anything. But aren't you glad this morning that he brought us from a mighty long ways? And if you're going to read my book, you better read the entire book. Don't get stuck at chapter 2. Bartimaeus says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And when we recognize who Jesus really is, we look beyond the fact that he grew up as a poor man and we see him as rich in God. Amen. Now I ask my people to turn and talk to each other. I want you to do the same thing. Turn to them and say, do you really see the God in me? 
See, you'll miss the God in me if you're reminding me of what I used to do. As a matter of fact, we did it together, so you don't have to tell me what I did. And I'm surprised you're still doing it. And Barnabas, even though he was physically blind, could see this was the divine Jesus. And not just from where he was from. But then, then something else, physical blindness has nothing to do with who you are and who you know. Amen. Physical blindness has nothing to do with who you are and who you know. No. Listen, the reason, watch this, that the crowd did not recognize who Jesus really was was because they were not acquainted with him from the first place. They were unable to speak of the Jesus phenomenon as the operative reality in their lives because they suffered from spiritual blindness. Someone said, if you don't know him, you can't speak about him. If you have not known him in the parting of your sins, you cannot speak of him as the source of your salvation. If you have not surrendered to him, you cannot speak of him as the savior of your soul. If you have not known him in sorrow, then you cannot speak of him as the joy of your salvation. If you have not walked if he's not walking with you in the stillness of your anguish and sorrow, you cannot sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. You must first know him before you can speak about him. Amen. You must know him. Amen. Anybody know him? Anybody here really know him? When you know him, you become like Bonimaeus. I don't care what people say. I know him, so therefore, I don't need you to testify for me. I got my own testimony. And even though I can sing but can't sing in tune, I still make melodious music because when I think of what he's done for me, I don't need anybody else to speak for me. Amen. And oh, the day when I got to know him for myself, I used to listen to my mother and what she would say about him. But one day I got to know Jesus the son of David, for myself. My hands look new. My feet look new. My outlook is new. And once I got to know him for myself, I had my own testimony about what God would do for me. And when you get to know him for yourself, you'll be like Bartimaeus. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to Jesus. And the only thing that really matters is that you're talking to Jesus. But then that's another thing I want to leave you with today. Um, when you get to really know Jesus, he'll turn our lives from meaningless to meaning. Amen. Bartimaeus came from a rich family. He came from a background where his family was proud. And you didn't do things to embarrass the family. How many of you grew up hearing your parents say, you have my last name. Don't you ever forget. And don't embarrass me. Amen. How many of you had parents like my mother, before we go into a particular place now, before we go in here, let me set the record straight before you go in here. Before you go in here and do something. And I have to embarrass you because you embarrass me. It's something about a name. And Barnabas came from a rich family. And because, watch this, he had become a beggar, his family disowned him. They left him to himself because he embarrassed them. But Jesus came and said to him, I'm going to change you from meaningless to meaning. Amen. I'm going to change your name not from Bartimaeus, but to save, delivered, because I give meaning to meaningless. Amen. How many of you can testify that nobody can treat me like Jesus? Nobody treats me like the master. So therefore, I dare not praise an individual. All of my praise belongs to him. All of the shouting belongs to him. Every song of adoration I sing belongs to him. 
This is why you cannot please people all the time. But as long as the Lord is for you, who can be against you? This is why you can't spend time trying to make people happy. Happy is a temporary thing. But joy comes only from God. God gives joy and God gives meaning to the meaningless. Therefore, I will praise him and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. There's some good news and I'm finished. Watch this. Uh, the God we know is in the name changing business. Amen. God is in the name. He gives meaning to meaningless. God gives purpose to purposeless. God gives reason to reasonless. He'll stop by to call others to him and then ask, what do you want? In unison, on the count of three, one, two, three, together. What do you want? Jesus, I just want to see. I could ask you to give me the winning lottery ticket for mega millions, but that won't give me sight. I could ask you to give me 20 children. That'll take my money out of my pockets, <laughs> but it won't give me sight. I could even ask you to, when I vote in November to let my candidate, whoever it is, become president. But brothers and sisters, I promise you that won't give you sight. Or you could even say, Lord, I want a mansion down here that when you find out how much the cleaning lady costs, <laughs> that won't give you sight. But Jesus, the sight I want is to be able to see you for who you really are in my life. I want to see you as my savior, as my deliverer, as my comforter, as my healer, as my friend. In the midnight hour, I want to see you. And I don't have to have physical sight to see you, but my spirit wants to link up with you. The Lord is in the habit of changing names and giving us one more chance. Well, I said he'll give you another chance. He'll give you another chance. Um, they were getting heaven ready for the return of Jesus. And as they were getting heaven ready, Michael was striking up the heavenly choir. Gabriel was getting Missouri United Methodist Church together and they had this huge sign saying welcome home Jesus all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all they were getting heaven ready but it was taking Jesus too long so, Michael sent out a seraphim. Go find Jesus. We've been waiting on Jesus. Don't he know? Even in heaven, we got stuff to do. And the seraphim went out and came back with some news and said, I found Jesus. What's taking him so long? He'll get here in a minute. And the seraphim said, but now let me tell you, he left here by himself, but he's not coming home alone. And when Jesus got to the gate, Gabriel struck up the band. And Gabriel said, wait a minute, Jesus, it's so good to see you. Who is this gentleman who's walking with you? And Jesus said, well, I was hanging on the cross. And while I was hanging on the cross, this gentleman said, when you get to the kingdom, remember me 
And I told him, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. And don't you thank God this morning that when we get to the kingdom, there's going to be some men and some women and some boys and some girls and uh, all the food you need, you'll have what you need because you'll never be hungry anyway. But when you get to the kingdom, Jesus will say, they were on the cross with me. And all they asked me was, can you help me to see? And I told them, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. I want you to stand on your feet. I know we've come through COVID, but I want you to find somebody. Get close, get close to them. Get close, get close. And I want you to hug them this morning. Hug them this morning. <clears throat> Hug them this morning. And tell them, when we get the glory, I hope to see you there. Because our God gives meaning to meaningless. Then say, neighbor, that's why I love you in the Lord. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. You sit you sit in the king chair. <laughs> heals and who gives sight and who restores vision. And one way that we express our gratitude is in the sharing of our lives and the sharing of our gifts and the sharing of our resources. And speaking of expressing gratitude, can we one more time say thanks be to God for Reverend Dr. Anthony Witherspoon. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know I've never ended a sermon by hugging someone. That was really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will remember that. I will remember that. Uh, but as our ushers come forward now, please, I invite us to worship God by giving our tithes and our offering. And if you filled out any of those Connect cards to let us know a little bit about yourself, you can place those in these baskets too.
For the building of your kingdom and to your glory. Lord, we ask that you add and multiply to these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Invite us to join together in our closing hymn. It is number 307, Christ is Risen. The words are on the screen and on page 307 in our hymnals. Christ is Risen. Verse 1. Verse 1.
Elijah, the next time we come, I want you to play that guitar with this group that you play. Amen. <laughs> Amen. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord's kindness, grace, and mercies go with you and keep you. And am I of the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Let all hearts say amen.